Tara, third one by Kirwa, and the fourth one by Efe. I hope that is in order so that we can start together. Okay, thank you. So we shall start. I'll start then Sarah, Sarah Wino, then Kirwa, then Efe. Be not dismayed, water tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day, all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Yeah, you can continue. Sarah's cannot sing. Through days of toil, when your heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fears your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No, no, I can't. My, I have a sore throat, Maggie. I don't think I can sing. Oh, okay, it's it's fine. Um, the last stanza of the song. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast god will take care of you god will take care of you through every day all the way he will take care of you Take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Thank you all for joining in and singing from where you are. You can continue um, 
sending your request in the chat box. Ify. Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Hi. 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 Uh, hi. You. You can. You can do the welcoming. Then Maggie continues. We just began. Oh. Before you. Okay. Got into okay. Uh, hi everyone, and uh, thank you for joining in for our, our sundown today. If you know anyone who's who ought to be here but they are not here, please invite them. Invite all of your friends and uh, uh, invite uh, 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 invite your family, invite your acquaintances, and everyone on your status. Yes, so welcome to our, our today's sundown. We will be having a prayer and testimony sundown, and uh, I am really glad to see all of you here. So I assume by welcoming, I'll just invite a few, uh, I'll invite a few people just say hi, and then we'll proceed with the song session because we are way into the program right now. So I'll just invite uh, someone to just say hi and say where they went to church today. Um, let's start with um, Ian Machogu. Say hi and please tell us where you went to church today and how it was. Hi, um, Ian and, oh, I went to Mudalongo. SDA. I uh, just went to visit um, in a new place. So I just wanted to see a church and it was fine. It was nice and actually it was a camp meeting. So it was actually better than naturally to the being. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Ian. I'm glad to hear you had a nice Sabbath at Mlolongo. I think I know Mlolongo. It's down Mombasa Road near Machakos. Yes, uh, thank you, and, and welcome to our fellowship today in the evening. Um, now our pal, now our pal. Um, Optimist777. Say say hi and tell us where you went to church today. Uh, Optimist777. Hi, Optimist. Uh, optimist, the optimist uh, will pass. Optimist has passed on that one. So, um, Elsie, Elsie Nyangweso, please say hi and tell us where you went to Sabbath today. Elsie, can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, Becky, Becky, Becky Mwango, please say hi. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name hi. is Becky. Uh, I went to church online, actually using the online church. Yes, this one for you. And because in Kisi, churches are closed. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Becky. Uh, we are still, we are still praying with you. Uh, that your churches may be opened, but yes, we're glad that you enjoyed the fellowship that we had today together. And so I uh, will just invite Margaret uh, to come continue with the singing session, even as we continue with the rest of the program. Uh, keep inviting your friends. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, you can. You can also you can also say the songs that 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 are a testimony for you. And 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 I wanted to to suggest one if Margaret would allow me. Okay. Yes, uh, this song, Jesus paid it on. Jesus paid it on. Amen. Um, we shall sing that song. You can also um, suggest songs in the chat box, and. Uh, you can also unmute and, and just say what the song did to you and why you like the song and why it is a testimony for you. Yeah, so Mr. Chair, you can as well tell us something after we finish singing the song. Song 184. I will start the song and then and then I will request I will request Eva to sing the second stanza and then Ibrahim, the third stanza, and then the last one, Mr. Chair. So I will start, then Eva, then Ibrahim, and then lastly, Mr. Chair. 
I hope that is in order. If you have any reservations, feel free to type so that we make prior arrangements. Okay. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Okay. <laughs> Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper spots And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all no to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I can sing the chorus, please. Someone can sing the stones of them and sing the chorus. Okay. Okay, let me continue. Okay, sir. Since nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, now I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him my own. Since I left a crimson stain, he washed it right as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him my own. Sin and left a crimson stain, he washed it right as no. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, I'll lay my trophies down. All down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all, all to him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. Amen. So Ahmad did ask me to say why I chose this song and why it's a testimony to me. And I remember the last quarter, the last less the last quarter's lesson, the promise. And one of the last things we studied, the last last um the last last lesson was that Jesus died so that we may have life and have it abundantly. And so even whenever you go to the, you know, sometimes you say, I want to, uh, you go to the grocery shop and buy something and you say, and someone makes a joke, did Jesus also pay for that one? But Jesus paid it all so that we may have life more abundantly. So yes, Jesus paid for that one too. Oh, amen. And thank you for sharing. I don't know why um, you are not suggesting songs. You don't have to say why there are testimonies to you, but then you can also suggest a song. And the next one is... Um, 
Song 189. And the song is a testimony to myself. I was recently talking to a friend and I was telling them about this one time I was I was just overwhelmed. I don't know if I was sweating in my eyes or I was crying, but it was one of the two. And, and that there were that just times in my life I know that I find nothing interesting. That nothing at all is interesting. No one, no one. Not even water is interesting. And and such times you don't even know what is happening. Are your eyes crying, sweating? Are you scared? Are you terrified? Or are you just helpless? And, and, and this is one of the songs that always give me joy. Yeah. And we shall sing the song. I, um, and I will request the following to help missing the song. Masi Maina will start us off. And then the second stanza will be sung by Griffin's Omondi. And then the third one will be sung by Elsie. And then I will finish with stanza four. So Masi, uh, okay, I might as well start. And then I will start. And then the second Stanza by Griffins, the third by Elsie, and then I will finish again. Who can chill the heart like Jesus? By his presence, all divine, true. And tender, pure, and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. All the thrills my soul is Jesus. He is all in all to me. The fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. Griffins. Well, I can't seem to find Griffins. Um, the second stanza. Love of Christ so freely given. Grace of God beyond degree. Mercy higher than the heaven. Deeper than the deepest sea, all the thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me, and the fairest of ten thousand. Blessed Lord, I see every need his hands apply, every good in him I see on his strength divine real love. to me. 
and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. By the crest of the wing river, with the rams of thy will sing, and forever and forever praise and glorify the life to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see well thank you for singing along and back to you Mr. Chair uh, thank you thank you very much uh, Margaret for leading us through the singing session we will have other opportunities to sing uh, as, as the program progresses. And, uh, and thank you for everyone who has participated in the singing session. Now we are going to the other sessions. And um, for this portion, for this moment in time, I know today we are at, uh, we are having um, prayer and testimony, um, sundowner. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to share what the Lord has done for us. And it also is an opportunity for us to adore him, to worship him in prayer, and, you know, to have these conversations as a family, because, you know, Sundowner is a place where we have those warm evening after Sabbath conversations as a family, and so welcome to everyone who is here. Yes. So, uh, what, what, has, what is your testimony for the quarter? What is your testimony for the quarter? Uh, I was just wondering, if you had to describe your testimony for the quarter in just one word, what will it be? Uh, what what will you write? You know, um, uh, I, 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 where I stay, I stay with my friends. So I'll just say, for me, one word that 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 describes my, what what is, that is my testimony for the quarter is grace. And uh, and I found this verse in Peter that says, "And grow in grace." For me, so for me, my testimony is an opportunity to grow in grace. So grace is my word, is my adjective that is, that is the testimony for me. Uh, my friend Wendy. Who is here will actually say that a testimony word will be clarity. God has given her clarity during the quarter. Uh, Bruno, Bruno, my other friend here, will say silence. God has given him that silence. There's that silence that allows you to think. And, and most of us usually need that silence. So if I was to ask you, what's your, what, the, what adjective is, 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 the, is your testimony for the quarter? But even as we proceed with the program, um, for this moment in time, it's a moment for us to thank God to adore him for who he has been for guiding us because we know that in everything that has happened through this quarter we have seen his hand he was guiding everything everything that happened to us we can always attribute it to him he was always there he was our father he was overseeing everything and so i'd like to welcome uh for the we're going to have for the adoration session uh, that is the one that is going to go first i am going to welcome elder griffins omondi And the Griffins is here. Yes. Meanwhile, you can type on your on the, on the chat box. What's your what's your testimony adjective for the for the quarter? I cannot see Elder Griffins. Um, let's see. Let's say Madam Chair is going to get Elder Griffins. So yes, I'd like to see your responses. What's what's your testimony words uh, for the what's your testimony adjective? Ah, for Effie, her testimony word is love. Is love. For Magoma, it's peace. It's peace. Uh -huh. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Give, send, send, send in your responses to the chat box. I will be seeing them even as we continue. Um, I think Griffo has left and then he's going to join back. 
in a, in a few. Yeah. So what's, what's your word? Uh, Marriott, what's your testimony word? Uh, Elsie, what's your testimony word? Ibrahim, I'm just reading you. Ah, Ibrahim is joy. Yes. We see who shares my testimony word, grace. Amen, amen. Moffat also says grace. Yes, so uh, uh, patience, patience, patience is the word for Griffith, for, for his born Kiro. Yes, power. Power is the word for Margaret Nyaboki. That's the testimony word. What's your testimony word, wherever you are? Um, yes, so I do not see if Griffith has joined us again. Uh, Margaret, you can lead us through a verse as. Um, as we try to get a hold of him. Understanding for Vivian. Uh, yes, Margaret. Yes, we will, we will go through Psalm 334 as suggested by Nyamache Eva. And I would request Eva to start us off with stanza one. And uh, then I will request Becca to sing stanza two of this song. And then I will ask Vivian Nyaega to sing the last stanza of the song. So we shall have Eva. Yeah, okay. Then Becca and then and then lastly, Eva, Becca, and then lastly, Vivian. Mm. Okay. Come thou found all very blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Hey, I raise mine Ebenezer, if I by the help of God, and I hope by the good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from thy fault of God, he to rescue me, he to rescue me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a data daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetal bind me close still to thee. Prone to the Lord, I feel it. Prone to live. The God I love is my heart to take and see, lead, seal it for thy court above. Amen. Amen. Maybe um, Eva may comment on uh, how the song has been a testimony to her as. Mr. Chair comes in. 
Yes, Eva. Yeah, okay. My name is Eva. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I can say I love this song. I've loved this song since I was in high school. And uh, in high school, it's when I gave my life to Christ. I remember I was in Form 3. And uh, the third stanza is, was my testimony at that time. Since even though I was trying to live, I had been baptized and I was trying to live a life of Christ, I was still trying or rather running away from what God really wanted me to be. And I wasn't really following his footsteps and I wasn't really following in what his word um, said. And I was faltering and I was backsliding a lot. So the third stanza is my testimony. It always appeals to me, you know. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily how I'm constrained to be. So let thy goodness, the goodness of God, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. But honestly, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel thee. I'm prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for the gods above. Yeah. That's my that's why I really love that song. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm sorry I, I keep butchering your name. Um <laughs> it's okay. Uh, forgive me. Yeah, Mr. Chair, back to you. Uh yes. So uh uh, my apologies. My apologies uh, for the for the for the delay. Um, uh, Griffins was supposed to take us through the session, uh, prayer session for adoration, uh, for a few minutes, but um, he has had an emergency and has had to leave the meeting for a few mi minutes. Therefore, I would like to, um, you know, we we are also having we we are also doing um, uh, we are we are also we we're, we're doing this prayer session where we're also sharing our testimonies. And so um, the prayer Griffins was going to do was a prayer of adoration, and 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 and, and um, uh, I'd like I'd like someone to post for us uh, the the meaning of the word adoration, the meaning of the word adoration. Magoma, I am sure Magoma will beat everyone. Magoma usually posts those things faster in the in the in the in the chat box than anyone. A, a, a definition of the word adoration. Amagoma, or anyone, anyone who can get a hold of the definition of that word. Yes. Okay. I see uh, Griffin's, Griffin's is back in, uh, but uh, I was getting a definition of the word adoration. Uh, Griffin will be the one who will be leading us through, through uh, the prayer of adoration, and therefore I will welcome him to continue with uh, the, the proceeding session. Yes, Magoma is back. Um, it means it's an act of religious worship. But what does the word essentially mean? Yes, so I'll welcome Griffins to continue. Please find that meaning, find that meeting. I will, I will be back after Griffins is done. Welcome, Elder Griffins. Yes, hello, good evening to all of us. Confirm that you can hear me. Good evening, we can hear you. Great. Um, I'm glad to join in. I'm very sorry I was in here by exactly 8.01. But uh, something took me out. Yeah, something took me out from 8.17 when I was supposed to do stanza two of a song, which I couldn't remember. But I thank God I'm, 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 I'm back. Thank God I'm back. And uh, friends, many times it has been said that uh, prayer is lifting of uh, the heart and to God as to a friend. And I just imagine when I'm talking to to more, and I have to be when talking about
Yes, uh, sorry for that. When we're talking about lifting of the heart to God as to a friend, when you can be open with your friend, any, imagine the, how open you become to a friend when you're a now. If you are a lady or a man, those people with whom you can talk to as Kundi, I mean, just in your own cycle. And this is how I want us to open ourselves to God this time. You know, the same way you can just meet someone and be like, hello, how are you? And you just pour out your heart to them. That is how we ought to pour out our hearts to God. And to adore him is basically to approve of who he is and what he has done. In most instances, we learn about God in, in, in creation. And when we see the brooks, when we feel the gentle breeze, when we sit on lofty mountains, grander, we think of our God. All nature sings and round us ring the music of the spheres. We are talking about our father's world. And remember, uh, some good thing, uh, if we have, uh, let me just give this, then we'll do a prayer. If we have uh, the whole universe being created by God, we don't know the whole of the universe. We only know like tens of percentage of what really the universe comprises of. Then number two, we know the size of our galaxy that contains billions of stars. Then this billion of stars, we also have billions of galaxies. All of them are in motion, maintained by forces, maintained by forces that act on them. You can imagine the person who balances all these things so that you see things running to and fro. We are talking about the power of God. You can imagine of uh, stones lying on each other and creating very nice sceneries. God himself. When we get to the parks, one of the most enjoyable things that people would interact with and also act as therapy to them is actually nature. When people are depressed, they are sent to nature, to the hand of God himself. That's why they say, if the oceans were the ink, and... Okay, let's talk about all the leaves or basically were, were the place where to be written. We can talk about our God, but we can't really exhaust who he is, just about of his love. We have not actually explored other of his aspects. So friends, as we come to, to pray, to adore God, to appreciate of what he has done in our lives, I want us to think about him in this perspective. He is an omnipotent God, the great potentate of the universe, the one who commands everything. Like, absolutely every force that is on earth acting on anything, it is God. Think about it. And when we can imagine of that as a truth in our lives, then we can really know that our God is a God who can handle all things. That is why we always start our prayers with adoration, approving that our God is a God who can work in us. And right now, I'll just do, uh, I'll just offer a prayer of adoration to prove that our God is a God who is all powerful, a God who takes control of everything. And friends, it is because of our God. We have to affirm that He exists above all powers because He is the man who. He is the man who owns all things. Earth is It is God Almighty who made all things well. How great is God Almighty who makes all things well. So let us pray. Let's just bow down for a prayer now as we adore. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts and 
fold like flowers before thee, pale thee as the sun above. Melt the cloud of sin, cloud of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountains, blossom, blossoming meadows and flashing sea. Chanting birds and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessings, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest. Thou, our Father, Christ, our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing. Alleluia. O burning sun with golden beam and silver moon with softer gleam. O oh, rushing wind and breezes soft, O oh, clouds that ride the winds aloft, O oh, praise him, hallelujah, O oh, rising morn with praise rejoice, O oh, lights of evening, evening find a voice, O oh, flowing waters pure and clear, make music for your Lord to hear, O oh, praise him, hallelujah, O oh, fire so masterful and bright, providing us with warmth and light. Let all things their creator bless and worship him in humbleness. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, praise him. Praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Father in heaven, that we may accept that you are the man who ruleth above all things, that is God in all things. God, you created for us to behold, that we may see your glory and your power, dear Father. God in heaven, we have seen you and behold you in the things around us, God. We see uh, the beauty of the flowers. When the spring comes, the flowers open their leaves, open their hearts as they say hi to the morning sky, to the morning sun, dear Father. And they also uh, fold themselves uh, in harmony as they say goodbye to the evening sun at twilight. Father in heaven, the cobs break when they're Heat scotch them just to respond to your power, dear Father God. And animals hibernate just because you made them to do so, dear Father. God, when you bring the heat, this, the nature responds as the ice melts. And even God, everything can hear you when you speak to us through nature. And Lord, this day we adore thee and we lift you up on high because you are the great potentate above all things. Father in heaven, May the same power that we see in nature, the same power that we see work in our lives, be what shall guide us through our lives in faith, God, to, appre to approve of your power in our lives. God, this, may this be our lesson book and your power, your adoration be the language of our lips in all times. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Griffins, for guiding us through the session of adoration with such, uh, you know, you, 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 you just went through that hymn and it was like poetry. Thank you. Thank you very much. And every time, every time, every time we adore God, every time we praise him, every time we acknowledge him for who he is, all those times, we sometimes have to contrast with the frail nature of human beings. We remember how many times we fall. We remember how many times we fail to reach an ideal, that the ideal which we are told is God's ideal for his children, which is perfection. Many times we, we acknowledge him for who he is. We can't fail, but contrast it with our nature. And that is why uh, I will transition to the next session uh, of prayer, which will be led by Trevor, Trevor Zadi Okoyo, and um, he will lead us through a session of confession. Welcome, Trevor. Hi. I hope Hello. you cannot hear me. 
Yes, we can hear you. Nice. So I hope all of you had a fruitful Sabbath. Uh, and we start off on confession. I was reading a study about confession, repentance, and consecration, or we can say reformation. And you see that there's uh, an extremely thin line between the three aspects such that we cannot talk of them as independent entities, but they correlate to each other. But that's a study for another day. Uh, confession. So I think it's, it's, I think it's very systematic that confession comes second after adoration in the scheme of prayer. And it's actually really practical. You find that in our daily lives, we can't converse with some, it's, it's very hard or if not impossible for us to converse with someone who we are not in good terms with and it, it applies in prayer also that we find that sin, actually sin, acts like a barrier between God and us and it, it separates us from God, sin separates us from God and it, it will be hard to communicate to God if we do not sort of this issue about our sin and the rest. So the aspect of confession, confession brings the sin out of the picture to ease our communication with God. We see that, we see in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13, it says, Proverbs 28 verse 13, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and protected them shall have mercy. From this verse, you can derive the meaning of confession. It's like bringing out sin in light, in broad daylight, pointing out sin as it is, so that we may bring it out of the way and we may prevent it from hindering our communication with God. So, in our daily lives, we, we commit sin. We know we are carnal beings, we can commit sin either intentionally or subconsciously. Either way, sin is sin. And God knows that it's, it's like human nature to commit sin. We are, we are born with sin inherently. But he puts ways for us to correct these mistakes in us. You see that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he can forgive us, as seen from First John, verse 1 to 9. And how will this confession work? Confession can only work if it is sincere and heartfelt. If it is freely expressed, it's not false. Mm. We acknowledge the specific sins. You know, some people, when they're confessing their sins, they, they, they become vague. Yeah, let's say that they become vague. They do not hit the nail on the head. So that brings out the point of acknowledging specific things to the point and be definite. Like some people beat around the bush, they mean words. They don't point out sin as it is. As they don't point out the gravity of their sin. As you can see in some instances in the Bible, some confessions are made out of self-justification and trying to excuse the sin. Like in the case of Adam and Eve, after eating the fruit at the center of the garden, God asks Adam what happened. He, he shifts the blame to Eve. When God turns to Eve, the blame is shifted to the, to the snake in the garden. So instead of acknowledging their sin, instead of bearing the guilt of their sin and hating the sin, in all its gravity, what do they choose to do? They try to justify themselves, trying to excuse the sin, so that mo mostly people do that in order to escape the, the consequences of the sin. They they fear more the consequences of the sin than acknowledging what they've done is wrong, and they, they ought to confess and repent and seek reformation. 
Uh, we can see an example of a sincere and genuine confession from Paul in the book of Acts chapter 26, verse 10 and 11. That's when Paul was brought before King Agrippa, and he says, Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them off in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being, exige being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto twenty cities. Or uh, you can also see in First Timothy one fifteen, Paul refers to himself as the chief of sinners. From Paul, you can see that in his case, he didn't try to justify himself that he was one of the Pharisees. That was the norm of how things were being done. That he, it was it was in his place to do so. He pointed out clearly, without missing words, what what wrong he did against the people of God. Uh, not caring about the consequences of the sin, but knowing that what he did was wrong, and he needed salvation from God. And that's what we should borrow and apply in our lives, in our everyday lives, we should, we should use the character of Paul in our everyday lives and not like that of Adam and Eve. And we can also see from, from this week's study, the section, on, the section on the repentance and confession of David when God sent his prophet to David. His repentance and confession was very sincere and genuine that God decided not to punish him. That's what we should do always while we are confessing our sins. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what we should do. And after the confession, you see that God, God will come. God will come and save us from the sin and its negative nature. Uh, and this is a verse that says, I think it's Ezekiel 33, verse 15. Ezekiel 33, verse 15 says, If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he robbed, walk in the statutes of life, without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. He has he hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. That's the promise that God gives us. And you also see that we should after confession and repentance and being accepted to God, that you can find rest in Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you there with me? Hello? Yes, we will so we do our confession prayer. So let's do a confession prayer. Our merciful Father, you know, King, God of heaven and that creator of everything that is above and below, we come before you, oh God. Oh God, we come before you with the spirit of confession. You know, we've done a lot of wrong in our lives. We've wronged our neighbors. Is wrong, your father, either consciously or subconsciously, father. But sin is still sin, as you pointed out. Oh God, we come before you for consecration and reformation, father. Yes, it will blot out all the things we committed. Make us as white as snow and clear out the red circle in our life, oh father. We come before you still with sin, father, asking you to take. The gravity of the sin away from us, oh Father, so that we may be like the Son of Jesus Christ, we may be a mirror image of Christ, and we have initially planned the Father. Father, please guide us, Father, that if we interact with the King of Father, <coughs> we may come out victorious as it is your plan. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Matthew, Mr. Chair.
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trevor, for leading us through that session of confession. And um, I think there's a verse, there's a verse in, uh, in uh, James, that, that should be James chapter 5, uh, but verse 16, which usually says, confess your sins to each other. And I wonder what, what we perceive the meaning of these words to be. Um, but as, as a ministry, uh, we, share, we share in these moments. We confess our sins to each other, as in James 5, verse 16, which also says, pray for one another. Thessalonians 1, verse 5, First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, build each other up. Um, there's another one in Thessalonians that says, encourage each other. And, 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 and so we confess our sins to each other. Thank you for leading us uh, through that session, uh, Trevor. Now we will be going to a session of um, Thanksgiving, which will be preceded by a session of testimony and all that will be led by uh, Sister Agnes Maureen. But before she does that, I would like to welcome uh, Margaret for, um, for a, song, a, a song interlude. Yes. Um, hi, again. A, song, a, song, a, song, a song that reflects the sessions we have gone through. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like us to sing song 301. And I would request, and I would request um, the following to help sing. I, I can't find. Sister Agnes, but then our oh, Griffins, you you said you had a part to sing and then you disappeared. Welcome back. Um, you shall lead us in the first and second stanzas of the song, 301, Nearer Still Nearer. And then um, the other two will be done by Elsie Nyangweso. Thank you. Griffin Somondi, the first and the second, and then Elsie, the third and the fourth. I hope it is in order. Griffins? Yes. Okay. You shall start again. I'm here. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, you said I do stanza one and and two. Okay, so 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 the song is nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. Nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. Draw me. My Savior, so precious thou art. Fold me, oh, fold me close to thy breast. Shall Time he saved in that heart. Shelter me safe in that heart. When of rest, nearer still, nearer. Nothing I bring, not as an offering to. Only my sin for now contrite heart grant me the cleansing thy blood doth impart grant me thy cleansing thy blood 
doth impart. Nearer, still nearer, Lord, to be thy sin with its follies, I gladly resign all of its pleasures, pomp and its pride. Give me my Jesus, my Lord, crucified. Give me but Jesus, my Lord, crucified. Nearer, still nearer, while life shall last, till safe in glory. My anchor is cast through endless ages, ever to be near my Savior, still near. To thee, near my Savior, still near to thee. Amen, and uh, thank you, Griffins and Elsie, um, for leading us through the song. Um, back to oh, we welcome Agnes. Welcome, Maggie for the next session. Okay, thank you, Maggie. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Happy Sabbath. I hope you all had a nice day. So uh, this is the Thanksgiving and testimony session. Basically what we have all been waiting for, which was the whole essence of this meeting, because we're giving thanks to God because he is good and his love endures forever. Time is fast spent. I think a lot of us joined at eight and I am not planning to keep us here longer than you all should, lest I wear you be. So um, if you have a testimony, you can indicate like, okay, initially there was um, around three people who had indicated prior that they had testimonies but if you have a burning burning testimony that you'd like to share and you're, you know you're not among the three people who reached out to either Effie or Mogere you can indicate that in the chat section yes and then yeah we can give you a chance to to speak so basically um this is i think the last time we had an overall prayer and um prayer session i also did thanksgiving and i was saying how literally every time i just end up with thanksgiving i always end up doing the thanks so um after this time i am doing the thanks and i believe it is not a coincidence i personally have a lot hey <laughs> a lot a lot to thank god for and I would like to read a verse. On Adjoa, I came to realize that as human beings, um, it is so easy to dwell on the negatives that are happening in our lives. Positive things happen. You know, something good happens and we gloss over it. We are happy. And then something bad happens. And suddenly we forget all the good things that have been, you know, have been whatever you all get. Yeah. So uh, I love this verse or this book psalm the 103rd psalm which says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases 
who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your worth, your youth story is renewed like the eagles. I don't even know what to say. I think I just I just hope that you all can take time and read Psalms as in they I think in Africa two point and everything that um David says is just thank you, thank you, thank you. Or give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love and just whatever. I think despite all the bad things happening around us, if we take time and look closely, there is something to thank God for. Be it the friends and family that you have, be it the job or employment that you have, be it the breath that you have, the life, the health that you have, your family, your studies, probably the resources God has gifted you. Even in times of trouble, when it seems that your world is falling apart, there is something to give thanks to God for. Always, always. And so, yeah, basically that's all I was going to say. And um, in case I remember anything, <laughs> yes, I am going to tell you. And so um, as we prepare to usher in the testimonies, um, just a minute, let me confirm the people who are supposed to do the testimonies. I know that was, that was Maggie, that was Brian Aminga and Mogere. So Brian will start us off, then Maggie and Mogere. So as I don't know if Bran is in the meeting. Just a minute, let me check. Uh, Aminga is not in the meeting. Aminga, if you're there, maybe you can unmute and say hi. But I can't see him in the meeting. <laughs> okay, so meanwhile, um, we are going to sing. We won't sing all of it. You all open your songbooks to hymn 86, How Great Thou Art. Yani, this song is a beautiful song because, hey, God is God and God is still good. Yeah. So um, I will sing, I will just sing one stanza, stanza one, and then I will welcome Mogere. Yes. So you can sing with me. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my song, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my song, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Mogere, wait, yes, Mogere, yeah. Uh, uh, can can uh, the can Maggie go first as I organize my thoughts? Sure, Maggie, are you in a position to go first? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, then please do. Um. Well, hi everyone again. I, I remember when we were talking about um, our testimony word and mine was power. And it was power and still is power because um, okay, this is not going to sound your, it's not your perfect testimony template, but then it's, it's going to work. It has to. Um, I recently got my ID. Yeah. And it was a very exciting um, moment for me. Yeah, because of many reasons. And obviously that I could do more things that I couldn't do by law. Uh, and uh, after that, I was just... And, and then one thing about the ID, many people's, I don't know, those photos, they come out looking, I don't know, terrible. Mine was cute, like very cute, very cute, I promise. And then 
and then after that, I, and and if I go through the process of how I actually got the got the ID, it was a testimony itself because I didn't have exactly some some documents. But then I don't know how or why. I just woke up one day, and the Lord provided help. I, that is all I can say because there is no other way I can explain how I actually got it. Okay, that was it. But then, like, uh, I was just like, okay, every every person has that time in their life they have to get their ID, normal stuff. So I didn't really bother about it. And then, like, one it, was it one month? Yeah. One month down, I am in my house. I had gone through a hard time um, trying to transfer ownership from previous registration and ownership things from Safaricom. And then I was having a hard time. So through all that process, I, I Nikitoka Safaricom house, I get to my house, I can't find, I can't find that ID. But then like it is, I I, I could remember it, it is, okay, still it is, it is in this house, but I don't know where. So I, I went like two weeks without an ID. At that time I had um, completed my um, transfer from uh, the previous owner to me now. But then like my m -Pesa wasn't working and you know that is critical. Like you, you know it is critical. Like at a, you know, you just need to have like at a 10 bob account for some reason, like in case, worst case scenario. So I was really feeling like, Eh, like it just needed to work and then i was trying to also work through other sim card things on my phone and it was not coming through and at that point there, there are small things there are small things that that pile together and they create frustrations one thing leads to another another leads to another and i tend to be logical and everything has a reason that kind of stuff but then i was like um this one happened then this one happened and and everything was now a mess i was in a state of deep restlessness and then now this is where the testimony comes in so i i i was of course i was talking to a friend day to day as friends talk i called a friend and I was sharing how I misplaced my ID in my house and I can't find it. And then the friend tells me, um, pray for it, you know, pray, pray that you may find the ID. That was like on a Friday. Uh, yeah, the next day was on a Sabbath. And the friend is not Adventist. I, I, and the friend is not Adventist. The friend is Muslim. So I'm like, eh. Hey, God, I know why. I know, I know why you made my ID get lost. I know it is so that your glory can be seen. So I was calculating in my mind. God, I know your plan. I know you made this thing disappear, and and I know you made me pray. I know you. You knew I was going to pray, and you knew you you had known it before. I even it happened that I was going to share this with my friend, and they would feel touched. And I was like, God, I know your plan. So the Sabbath. I was attending at KNH and I remember I was just happy because I, I, I remember the day was just, I was just walking in faith. I was just walking in faith because kuna kwanga na shida ya magari huku, but then long story, I was walking in faith and then like things just were working out through. So I was just having a feeling. It was presumption. I'm sorry to ruin it for you. So I, I was just feeling it like, yeah, if I come back to this house, I will have that ID. And I'm going to call my friend. My prayer was answered, brother. Like, you know, like, you know, the Lord works. And it's like he's Muslim. You get how I was thinking. And I, so I was like making judgments for God. Like, I know this is how it's working. So yeah, Sabbath ends, I still don't have my ID. And now at that point, things are just piling. I was supposed to do some, a lot of schoolwork with the ID to apply things with my ID. They were piling together and nothing was moving. Nothing was working. I was frustrated. And I, I, at that point I was like, everything was all over and I couldn't do a thing that like that was everything was in a mess and that was the least thing I could do and itself it was not working and uh, so um, I I had a moment where I I actually sat back and um, 
and was asking myself why I was feeling so bad. It's because I was expecting God to act in a way. It's like I had laid out a plan for him. I was, it, it was like I was thinking that was, that was what he was going to do. So I was just having a lot of presumptions and I, I, I had broke myself. And now this is the victory part. So I, after the Sabbath, I feel, I felt sad and I told my friend, you know, I didn't find it. I'll keep praying. Yeah. If you want to pray for me, like, you know, you can do it. And then like, that was just it. Uh, that was it. So like on the day, on the day of now, I decided to, you know, replace and go through all that. So remember, I do not have um, a national ID. I can't get my SIM card operations on my phone to, to work properly because they there were complications that happened during the transfer of ownership and now i couldn't operate my phone normally so i can't operate my phone i'm supposed to be in town and replace huduma center and apparently these days you have to use your phone go online do many things like at that time you you don't even have airtime because you can't access things like buy airtime or you don't even have money in the first place and then I, I get to town and everything is still not working. But that day, I remember I was just like praying to God because how do you, I, I walked into a safari com shop without an ID for that case. And I was, and at the gate, they never ask if you have an ID, but then this specific day they asked and I'm like, um, 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 that is the problem. And then the lady didn't even bother. She let me in, surprisingly. And then I, I, with, I, without an ID, I walked into a Safaricom shop at like, a, it was like a high, it is not one of those Safaricom shops like around Ziko Tao, Mwitu. It's like just secluded. It's just special. Few people go there. Hmm. And then I walk there without an ID and I walk out with, with an MPESA registration and a and a working phone, like a SIM card that is actually working because I was out of touch with my, with, from my parents and everything and everyone. And there was no other way to explain it because I, I, I didn't have um, the waiting card. I didn't have anything. But then by that faith itself, I was just glad that it worked. And later in the day, I also visited uh, Uduma Center place and and i i actually got to have a waiting card for my new replacement and i am uh, due to, i will pick it up like the middle of this week something of that and it, all i can remember in that day is that i walked in faith because there was no way i i, I went just to town without a plan and came out with all my problems, not all, but then like basic, all the, like the roots of restlessness for, for, for that situation, they had been fixed. I, I, I had my phone back and everything back and I was just so grateful. And, and after that, I learned a great lesson that God is all powerful and it doesn't, it, we do not limit him that you cannot get an MPESA registration without an ID. You do not calculate for God what he can do or what he can't do. Sometimes we we limit him with logic, with other things that we put in our minds. You know, like it's impossible to get out of this place on, uh, say, to travel on a Monday morning and be in time. So, such, such things, we forget that he is all powerful. And that, that was my greatest lesson. Uh, thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Maggie. As she was saying her testimony, actually remembered this song. Um, it's by Natalie Grant. It's called A uh, King of the World. And she says, I try to fit you in walls inside my mind. I try to keep you safely between the lines. I put you in the box that I have designed. I try to pull you down so we are eye to eye. And she asks, when did I forget that you've always been the king? of the world and i tried to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world sometimes we think when we are praying we are twisting we're trying to um twist god to do for us what he wants to do for us and that is not the right attitude of prayer but anyways thank you so much maggie for the testimony and so um 
Mogere, I don't know if you're, you're, you're settled. And after Mogere, I think we'll finally have Mercy. Meanwhile, because not everyone may get a chance to speak, we can all get a chance to type. And so you can type in the chat section what you are grateful to God for, whatever it is. Like if it is, yeah, whatever. Miss your pay ideas because, yeah. <laughs> you know what god has done for you so you can just type it in the chat section and you know share what what maybe god has done for you or what you're grateful for and so i will welcome mogere yeah thank you i will uh, take I a very mr chair you're going to keep time <laughs> yeah I will, I will keep time thank you yes uh, we are running way out of time uh, we're supposed to finish as men that um uh, i would like to i i didn't i didn't i didn't i i told if you if you would have read my chat with madam chair i told her fix testimony because i didn't intend to share anything uh i was just yeah i was just wanted to encourage us all to share our testimony our thanksgiving for for what god has done for us and um, one thing I wanted to thank God for during this period is uh, is my job. I've had an opportunity to work as a as a as a management consultant, and with a with a specific company. And I'm thankful for that job. And uh, sometimes, sometimes we usually just want to thank God for uh, for the gift. But today, what I'd like to thank God for is uh, is. Uh, the things which generate the gift sometimes uh, you get a job you, you get a job not because it's just be, jobs are not bestowed on people people earn jobs you qualify for jobs before you get them so i'd like to thank god my thanksgiving is to thank god for a diligent spirit in whatever little work he has placed me in because whoever is faithful in little is always given an opportunity to be faithful in much Thank God for that diligence. Thank God for that eagerness to be of value uh, in where, wherever I am placed in. And it's also an encouragement to all of us in in, in whatever little thing you're placed in. Uh, it's always it's it's yeah it's always you give, give your heart to it. Give your heart to it. Um, I also remember that my my boss gave me an opportunity to give a job to one of my friends. And what essentially led me to giving this particular person that I chose to give them the job was because I work with them. Let's say you work with someone in Vineyard and you can see their diligent spirit. You can see their eagerness to, to, to be of value in whatever they are placed in. And that's, that's my testimony. May God, may God give us these attributes, these qualities that, that qualify us for what we may seek to do. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I won't add anything to that. Marcy? Oh, hi, everyone. Thanks, Agi, for the opportunity. So my testimony, I just said I'll testify on behalf of like a family friend from church who have a son who's like one and a half no, one year and one month old. And because he's teething at this age, he got like, I think four teeth at his upper jaw. And like when he was, he was training to walk, you know how kids take walk and fall, he swallowed his tooth. And uh, okay, the, the mom thought that probably the tooth like went to the stomach, but when they went to the hospital, they were told that the tooth went to the lungs and it became a very serious case. They went to the goto, but they were told that they don't have practitioners to perform the surgery, so they were referred to KNH. Till, okay, it was an emergency case and they were given the room and everything. So on Wednesday, they went and, uh, okay, the surgery was performed and after like five to seven hours, the doctors managed to get the tooth out of the bronchus. Yeah, it was in the bronchus, so they managed to. And I remember seeing Agi's data that says 
uh, it was saying like god is close to the physicians who are god fearing and we were praying and that was a miracle because where the truth was okay it was a very sensitive area and we are grateful to god i remember the dad was testifying today and i almost even cried because of how happy i was oh and now my testimony uh, i'll be brief okay i just want to encourage us to pray like when you don't feel like okay probably your head is aching or your legs are aching like for me the first thing i do is to pray and i remember like about a week ago i had a problem with my stomach for like a week and then it got to a point i had to go to hospital but before i went to hospital like the previous night i prayed and in the morning like everything was okay and i was like hey girl the only thing i needed to do was to pray and everything will be fine because god knows every part of our body and i remember telling god i'm feeling bad i don't know what i'm feeling and i don't know where it is but god since you know my body and you know everything just heal me because I, i don't like medicine and i don't like hospital so in the morning like everything was fine like to date i don't even feel anything so let's continue praying thank you Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Marcy. Indeed, we serve a God of the impossible. And oh, what peace we often forfeit and what needless pain we bear just because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We should actually normalize praying. Like we should normalize praying. It is so true. Normalize praying. Because God is near to us and he's just waiting for you to ask just ask and you will receive of course there's like a lot to eat that sometimes god doesn't answer our prayers in the way we desire but you know yes it is in the best way possible and so um i I am so i'm so grateful to those who are still typing in the chat section for those who are just joining us we are doing our thanksgiving stroke testimony session and we are telling or we are testifying to others through the chat box um saying what you are grateful to god for yeah so i invite madam cha uh, thank you so much agi for this opportunity uh i i really thank god for literally for everything every every part of my being my life it it's it revolves around god i credit everything to god yeah and uh my testimony today is that i have i have always desired to to go to 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 visit the prison you know and just listen to them and just know their experience and now later this week um, advent harmony had a plan to to visit the prison i was so glad at least i would get an opportunity to get there uh, so today uh, our sabbath we had it uh, at committee prison the juvenile section and it was a really awesome experience i thank god for the lessons i learned and for him answering my prayers yeah and when you pray uh pray with me mm, i'm not feeling well that's why my voice is hoarse thank you Oh guy I'm so sorry madam Chia get well soon y'all for your information i was also in that prison Okay that just sounds wrong but yeah we we went to committee committee but just the YTTC the correction and training center and yeah so thank you so much Christine thank you Nyambox amen akiwa Nyambox there's a time Nyambox lost his phone and his laptop on the same day last year i think it was during orientation and that was one of the worst moments and i think Elvis Okoth also lost his um phone and laptop together with his roommate and so of course if god i don't know if he's there but if god has done this for nyambox maze he can do it for you too thank you for everyone who's typing for magoma yeah for christine uh for nyaega for samuel um and for Leslie and also those who are not in a position to to type and so as i bring this to a close let me just open my video for this guys oh, guys guys yeah don't judge my background <laughs> do not judge my background anyway so my name is agnes and um it is actually not a coincidence that i uh that i am doing this today okay it is a coincidence 
that I'm doing this today, but to God it is not. Um, on Monday at around three or four, we received our results. We completed end of year, uh, I think a month ago, and we received our results. And for those who know my story, I think Elsie, I don't know if Elsie is around, but yes, for those who know my story, know that I had some issues in school, like a lot of issues. I am not in the year I'm supposed to be in. And to be honest, for the longest time, it actually bothered me because people keep asking you, oh, so Agnes, how's um fourth year or yeah, I'm in med school. And they keep asking you, how's this year or how's that year? or they don't see you and they ask you where are you now what are you doing and i have seen lean yes she's my classmate and so for the longest time it bothered me and uh when you go through failure like it's failing exams i think there's a time we we did a session on that but when you go through failure something in you changes of course like you Keep telling yourself that, ah, girl, you're strong. You, you're you going to get through this. But people can't always be there for you. Like the nights when you're going to keep questioning God. And for the longest time, I knew I did not deserve to be where I was. I should have been way ahead. But then God allowed this to happen. And I couldn't understand why. I felt like I did better or I was doing better, or I was actually much better than some of the people who had progressed. But still they went on and I remained behind. And I complained and, you know, and stuff like that. And when I finally came back to school, now to do one unit, this one unit that had, like, you know, brought a lot of problems, I, of course, carried the heart and the fear the fear of failure, the disappointment, you know, you carry all that baggage with you. And I, I as we were doing exams, I knew anything could go wrong. Like, I was like, I wasn't exactly giving up, but I was like, if, if anything goes wrong by the past this, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I am here to tell you, for those who don't know, <laughs> I, had a, I had a retake. I had a supplementary and I was discontinued. Actually, the entire time I was Madam Chair. Okay, the time I was Madam Chair in 2020, I was actually not a, um, a student of the University of Nairobi, but people did not know that. Hey, people are carrying burdens out here. So I was discontinued. And I wasn't going to come back to your end by the day. I was so done with this university. I was like, well, these people, why are they stressing me out? Like, why is your end frustrating me? Why, why am I the one who is supposed to go through this? And, you know, we ask ourselves, why are we the ones who are supposed to suffer? Who, who else do you want to suffer? Who else? Mbona wuhu nataka mtu mungine, I'll go through that. Like, why not you? That is the question you should be asking yourself when you're going through trouble. Like, why not you? So anyways, um, I was applying to go to a school in Rwanda. Uh, if Elsie is there as in, <laughs> yes, Elsie and Mogere actually got a place. I got my admission letter. I think one day like I'll do a whole testimony because says it is no time. But I got the admission letter and I was like so excited. I was like, bye bye to this damn university and this country because y'all are gonna miss me when I'm gone. I am not coming back to this place. And guess what? <laughs> I did not go to Rwanda. It's actually an Adventist medical school. And at that time, I was bugged because um, it's expensive and we were supposed to get a scholarship, but then things happened and it didn't go through, like, not scholarship, sponsorship. We didn't get the sponsorship that we were hoping to get. And so I did not go to Rwanda. What happened? I stayed in the University of Nairobi where I did not want to be, but it was all God, like, God, when he says his ways and our thoughts, and his thoughts, sorry, are higher than ours, God is not us. God is God. And let me tell you, in retrospect, it was all God. Anyways, long story short, results came out. I passed. We're going to the next level. And I also learned that in Rwanda, schools are closed. And even the line, like the, the office, 
line that you know yeah rwanda that was communicating to us because they were still working out a plan for us to get sponsorship in september we still don't know how it will go we're waiting to see but it's not working and then i learned that schools in rwanda are closed all schools there is no functional school so had i been there i would still be in first year probably 1.1 and not progressing god is god sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to work out but it is all for the best like we walk by faith as maggie said we walk by faith and not by sight and so i think we have come to the end of our thanksgiving session and i will sing stanza two of him 86 yeah yes i will sing stanza I wish I could sing the whole song, but yeah, there's no time. Um, yeah, just it's the words for me. So yeah, when through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur. And hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze and sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! As in, my soul just sings that, hey, God is great. How great thou art, how great thou art. I really hope, like all of us, get to experience this blessing. Like, get to experience the, this kind of relationship with God where things go wrong but you still have something to thank God for because there is always light at the end of the tunnel. You always have something to be grateful for. So I will just pray to wind up the session. And yes, let me pray. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Our Father and our God, indeed your God and your good. As human beings, we fail to see the road gets dark it gets weary, it gets dreary, and we are afraid. And many times we let go of your hand, forgetting how far you have led us. Remind us, remind us, dear Lord, and hold back the curtains of memory now and then. Show us where you have brought us from and where we could have been. Lord, remember we are human and humans forget that we have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the teachings and the how, you, how much you have led us in the past. Indeed, the fact that we are here even as a ministry this day is basically a testimony that we will say over and over again our lives our health everything that has happened to us is basically a testimony of how good you are to us despite our undeservingness lord thank you because you are god have mercy on us and teach us lord to depend upon you teach us to trust in you teach us to have a heart of gratitude despite the circumstances that we are in inspire in us lord a heart that we love you, a heart that we look to you, a heart that will not let go of you despite the circumstances. Indeed, Lord, the times we are heading in are, are, the days we live in are evil. The times we are heading in will not be easy. The crisis that is ahead of us, Lord, will not, will not, <laughs> will will carry away those who have who do not have a closer relationship with you the storm that is coming is relentless in its fury how we ask that our faith may not grow smaller that it may grow greater and greater thank you lord for your blessings on us for the food that we eat for the clothes that we wear the shoes on our feet for 
a place to lay our heads for roof above our heads we thank you for each and every blessing that you have bestowed upon us and open our eyes to discern how much you have done for us and lord draw us closer to you now and forever is my prayer in jesus name amen thank you amen amen thank you agnes uh, for that uh, vibrant session so you may uh, will plead that you give us just like around 10 minutes uh, for the last session which we will be going through the session of supplication so if you have any prayer requests if you have anything that you would like to commit to the lord in prayer as we go into the, this next period or something some burden that you are carrying this is your time and then welcome uh eva Nyamachi to take us through uh, that session welcome eva yes hi guys hi, i'm going to please confirm if oh i'm audible okay that's yeah you are yes. Uh, yes, so uh, I know time is far spent and uh, it's getting very late. I'm also going to be traveling tomorrow, so wherever you are, please pray for me. And uh, i just like to dive in and uh, swiftly go through what I had prepared. So um, from uh, the meaning of supplication, no, a while back I never really used to understand the difference between a prayer and a supplication. But when I was now reading and preparing for this session, um, I got now the meaning. And that it is a form of prayer where one party humbly or earnestly asks another party, that is the higher party who is God, for something, either for the one who is supplicating or on behalf of another. And this very word, although it's a noun, it originally comes from a Latin verb, uh, called supplicare, I don't know if it's supplicare or supplicare, which means plead humbly. So in hindsight, this is an act of making our requests known uh, to God, but it is not complete without the virtue of humility. So uh, before I now uh, continue, before we pray, I would like to talk about some of God's promises concerning prayer and supplication that I picked out from uh, Ellen G. White's uh, book on prayer. If you have time, please go over it. It's very beautiful. It's very nice. And uh, yeah, you learn a lot from it. Yeah. So the first promise is this. If we ask, God will answer. That's the first promise that God gives us or that which I saw suitable for this um, for this sharing that if we ask God will answer God hears prayers and he has given us the assurance that he indeed listens and answers all our requests made in faith and this promise can be found in the book of John chapter 14 verse 14 which says that you may ask anything in my name and I will do it now that's the first promise. So this is the second promise. The second promise is that Jesus presents our poorly worded prayers to the Father. Many times I know that we may fall short of what to say during prayer. It may be because of the cares of the world or even sometimes our sin, even though it's confessed to God, that guilt of sin may wear us down in our prayers. But we have the assurance, the blessed assurance that our prayers will be presented to the Father without one awkward stammering word, beautiful and fragrant with the incense of his own perfection. This you can find from the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26, which says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot explain. And now the third promise. Yeah. Strength to overcome temptation given to those who pray. As you all know, we are all accountable to God for our actions and our thoughts on judgment days. It's, it's known. It's what we read. It's what we know. It's what we understand. We also... We have been given the power to control our actions if we do will. But if we are in any way lacking, we should turn to Christ in propriety, sincerity, and humility 
for strength to overcome any form of temptation. And now the fourth promise is that we must pray with the promises of God in mind. Every person who comes to Christ with a true and pure heart will have their, their prayers answered. We have that assurance that our prayers will be answered from the first promise that we've gone through. Your faith must never let go of the promises of God. From John chapter 15, verse 7, it says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be granted to you. So whatever promise that, okay, gen, uh, in general, um, from this verse, yeah, yeah, what do you call it? Yeah, this words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be granted to you. It doesn't only apply to the promises that God has been given you. Let's say, for example, if it's healing, you look for a verse, yeah, healing, and then you pray for it. But this also includes the laws of God. You cannot present a request to God if you yourself have broken, let's say, for example, the fourth commandment, or if you haven't respected your parents, or if you have committed adultery the words of God must abide in you so that your prayers may be granted to you. So keep the promises of God in your heart, remain in Christ, and uh, may his words abide in you. So now, does anybody have a prayer request? Please type it in the chat box. And if you have also a silent prayer request, you can just raise your hand up and uh, you can pray. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody? You can even unmute if anybody wants to unmute. Mm -hmm. For the ministry and its future. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody else? Samuel Odira, yeah, I'd like to pray for my friends that they may know and see the face of God. Friend of mine, Bradley James, I just feel the urge to pray for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Sawa Sawa, Kiago, pray for Paul's family for comfort. Paul's family. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have Lisa Atieno? Lisa Atieno, okay. Has anybody else? Anyone else? Silent prayer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sawa sawa. Uh, let's. Hulda and Mochari. Okay, okay. Sawa, sawa. Okay, now let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we indeed come before you this wonderful night with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. Thanking you for the gift of life, for us coming here and learning more about the power of prayer and uh, the different types of prayer and how we can apply it to our general lives, Jehovah Lord. First of all, I would like to pray for some of our friends who are battling cancer, Jehovah Lord, that you may help heal them and that you may guide them and that you may protect them, and that if their families are going through anything, Jehovah Lord, be it financial, be it physically or emotional pain, okay, that you may heal them and that you may comfort them, Jehovah Lord. Second of all, Lord, I'd just like to pray for our brothers and our sisters here, Lord, who are badly with the, the education, Lord Almighty, and that they may, if they have any problems, Lord Almighty, with their education, that you may see them through it, Lord, that you may give them the courage to forge ahead, Lord, that you may continue to guide them throughout everything, Jehovah, Lord. We also pray, Lord, for Masimaina's silent prayer, Lord, that you may help her in any way, Lord, that you seem best, oh dear, oh dear Jehovah, Lord. We also ask that this ministry, this vineyard ministry, may continue to forge ahead, Lord, in um, the pursuit of uh, whatever that you've 
linked for us, Lord, to achieve, Lord. We ask that you may continue to guide us, that we may continue to grow in you, Lord, and uh, it may be a success, Jehovah, Lord. We also pray for Paul's family, Lord, whatever they're going through, we ask that you may comfort them, Lord. And for Lisa Tiano, Lord, who has 65, who got banned by 65% of her body and is currently in hospital, Jehovah, we ask that you may guide her and that you may protect her, Lord. And we also pray for Ibrahim Onyango's Lord Almighty. He is praying for providence and uh, whatever that he's asking for, whatever that is burning in his heart, Lord, that you may require, Lord Almighty, that you may give him and that you may provide for him, Lord. We thank you so much for this opportunity to come here, that you may continue to guide us throughout everything, Lord. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eva, for guiding us through that session. And uh, as the uh, leader of the program today, I'd like to thank each and every one of you that has stayed with us so far. Uh, last week, if you were there for last week's inspiration, uh, we, we finished it and uh, Bosire bought credit for everyone who had stayed up to the very end. Uh, I might not be Bosire, I might not have the financial muscle, but I'd like to thank you in a personal way uh, for staying with us all the way up to the end. And um, may God bless you. And may this also be uh, the beginning or a new chance for you to forge ahead with your prayer life. And may you have a testimony the next time we have a program like this. With that, I'd like to welcome Madam Chair to close for us the meeting with either announcement or uh, the words of the grace. Uh, hi, I don't have any announcement, so we'll share in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone, and see you on Monday for BS. Amen. Good night. <laughs>